Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. And today we're looking at a performance by Brynolf and Leung, a magician duo from Sweden. This is a performance from season one of Penn & Teller's Fool Us. By the way, in case you're interested in learning something yourself, I recently published a tutorial on how to do the standard riffle shuffle with cards which looks like that, and it's pretty easy, you can learn it. Link in the description below! And the next tutorial I'm gonna make is how to do the spreading the cards on the table with an elegant touch. Like so. It's a lot easier than you would think, so make sure to subscribe and click notifications all if you don't wanna miss that video. All right, so hopefully that's something you're interested in, maybe? Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the performance by Brynolf and Leung. Brynolf and Young. I'm Jonas. I'm Peter. We're from Stockholm, Sweden. I really like a hat. We are very well known in Sweden. Have one of these, Peter. By who? If I would describe Peter, he's maybe not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> Jonas is uh, the right term might be psychotic. The trick we will be performing uh, to try to fool Penn & Teller is the world's most difficult card trick, uh, or at least that's what we call it. Oh, we finished then? Okay, great. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Oh. They may sound like an anagram, but they are in fact Sweden's finest magic guy. Please welcome Brnolf and Leung. I'm Jonas, and this is Peter. It's time for the world's most difficult card trick. And some of you might wonder what makes this trick the world's most difficult card trick. And a simple but yet brilliant answer is duct tape. By taping Peter's head. <laughs> and then by blocking most of Peter's senses. <laughs> We make it almost impossible for him to find the card that you, Mr. Teller, will select in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is entertainment. <laughs> that looks like it's going to be really painful to remove. I mean, he really wrapped it on his face tightly. Anyways, let's proceed. I brought a deck of cards, uh, and I would like you to select one, preferably a red, because we're going to write on it. And I brought a pen as well. Please write your signature across the face of the card. You know, in Sweden, I could probably trade that autograph for a farm. <laughs> Put it back. Now, because of the signature, this card is unique. All right, uh, I just wanted to say he said that he could sell Teller's signature in Sweden for a farm, which is pretty funny. But I'm wondering, are Penn & Teller, or were Penn & Teller so famous in 2011 in the UK? I mean, they're American magicians, but I guess they're world-renowned, so they're just popular everywhere. And by the way, I wonder why Penn & Teller decided to have their first season of Fool Us in England, you know? Maybe, and this is just some speculation, maybe they wanted to do it in America to begin with, but they couldn't get a TV channel to agree to produce the show. And they found someone who was excited about it in England and they did it there. Anyway, just some idle speculation. I have no idea if that's true or not. Proceeding. There's only one card in the world right now that looks exactly like this. I need a number as well, a number between uh, five and 15. Um, 11. 11, that's a great number. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Spear. Today's number is 11, okay? <clears throat> Are you ready, Peter? Let's go. Now, despite all the tape covering Peter's head, he will use his amazing sleight of hand abilities to locate your card, shuffle it around a bit, and place it on the 11th position, counting from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's most difficult card trick. <laughs> now it's because it's, it's the world's most difficult card trick, so we, you can't succeed. I like that, by the way, you know, the whole audience laughs and you see Penn and & Teller and they're just kind of like, okay, and 
what's next? <laughs> because, you know, this magician got it wrong type of plot is so common in card magic that Penn and Teller are just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> the difference between laymen and magicians' reactions to magic tricks. Back to the video. Did it once. You have to, like, we build suspense. This is basically how we do it. So a new number between 5 and 15. A six. Six, that's, that's a great number. Peter, you Thank missed you. just slightly. <laughs> uh, okay, so six is the new number. Okay, go ahead, Peter. One, two, three, four, five. Approximately six. Woo! I don't have a good feeling about this. <laughs> But it was difficult, Cotty. We built suspense again and again. Uh, uh, you know, now in Sweden, if you would fail like this, this would be totally appropriate. Uh, okay, uh, so we need a new number would be like boring. Uh, let's improvise. I mean, this is this is how we do it all the time. A staple gun. Okay, so here's the plan. I will spring the cards up in the air. Peter will find one staple that will hit your card so it falls down center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's most difficult card trick. Are you ready? interesting part. Keep your eyes on Peter. I like the first, the fact that at first it was in his head and then his arm, and he seems to really be complaining about the fact that it was in his arm. <laughs> I would be concerned about the staple in my head, personally. A pair of scissors. The first thing we did, the first thing we, did, uh, thing we did was to tape Peter's head. After that, you selected the card, which you signed which means that there's only one card in the world that looks like that. I think that Peter has something in his mouth. Neatly folded four times. Now, if this is really your card, then it's a pretty good trick. Yes or no, is this Tellus card? Sure looks like Sorry. Renault yes. and Young, that yes. was great. We loved it. It was Thank super you. entertaining, wasn't it? Great right fun. I had no idea how you would do that at the end. To come out of the mouth was fabulous. Does the tape hurt around the face? Because there's still a big mark across the top of the arm. So I'm thinking, you can try. We I'd rather more. not. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? Oh, yeah. Oh. There's a big chunk of hair yeah, on that. You can see this one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You can't do this act for too long. You're one. No, you can tell? Uh, yeah, yeah, you actually, you're losing it from the top there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... All right, so before we hear what Penn and Teller are going to say, I'll go ahead and give you my thoughts. You know, actually, about halfway through this act, I started to think probably the card is going to be inside of his mouth because of the fact that he has this duct tape around it. So I kind of anticipated the climax there. Uh, and I had in mind one method for how it could be accomplished, but then based off how something was happening there at the end, my prediction for the method changed. And it actually reminds me a lot of a magic trick by Jay Sankey, which involved a uh, paperclip and cards and some stuff like that. I don't wanna say too much, but magicians will know what I'm referring to. Anyway, I thought their performance was very entertaining and well executed and they seemed very likable, but I'm guessing that probably Penn and Teller were not fooled by this. Let's take a look. Uh, how the fun is it doing? Penn Teller? Fabulous act, huge oh, entertaining, I'm sure such you enjoy a fabulous it. act. I believe if we were younger, better looking, and lived in Sweden, this would be us. <laughs> <laughs> Has Penn and Teller stuff ever been shown in Sweden? You've ever seen us work? Yes, yes. we grew maybe, up with it. Then maybe I could explain this to you in, in ways that, uh, that you'll understand. Uh, the fake reveal was something that we, uh, a very nice version of something we did a couple of times on the David Letterman show. And the final thing you did at the end, we once did that same folded card and switching thing, which I bet you didn't see. But I said the important word, which is a switch there. Uh, I will just say maybe 
this will give you enough. Because I love this yeah. egg so much, okay. and I really don't want to tip so it because you should be doing this forever. So you're, you're, you're kind of feeling quite comfortable now, quite happy about your, the work you've done so far on this, and you're feeling reasonably happy about what's been said. Yeah, you're feeling very happy. happy. Did you do a card switch? No, no. not at all. Hmm, well, that was my second method guess, so I guess I would go back to my first method guess. I'll talk about that in a little while. Let's hear what's going to happen next. Let's wait for a second, let's enjoy this moment, and let's ask Mr. Penn, who was looking so happy and pleased with himself just 30 seconds ago. Did you see that? They were sitting back in the chair. We did that on this, we did that on this, I did this on that. Did you see this? But they didn't, did they? No, they so, didn't. let's hear what Penn has to say now. I'm even happier now than I was before because we love these guys, we want them in Vegas, and they fooled us. Yeah! yeah. Well, you're nice. And you're the ladies and gentlemen, two young men heading out with a swing in their set. I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> Because I knew and you were going down, I think he's going to say switch, he's going to say switch, it isn't a switch! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now let me go ahead and give you my concluding thoughts about this performance. You remember earlier when I was talking about there being two different possible methods? I think what happened here is they definitely employed the idea of a red herring. They used one method to accomplish the trick, but they acted in a way that would imply a different method was used. Penn and Teller took the bait and they said, this is how you did it, and the magicians were like, uh-uh. And so they won. Again, this is season one of Penn and Teller's Fool Us, and I'm guessing that the concept of using a red herring to trip up Penn and Teller might have been kind of experimental in the first season. I'm guessing that as the seasons went by, Penn and Teller got used to this concept and would apply a guess that would encompass both methods. I'm guessing. Anyways, as Penn said, I guess it's a great thing that they got fooled because they're a very entertaining duo and it'll be good for Penn and Teller to have them come and perform on their stage. So it's really a win-win situation for everybody. Anyways, back to the method. We know there was not a switch involved, so the card that came out of his mouth was indeed the original card. So somehow he controlled it and got it into his mouth during the performance. Unless you believe in magic, in which case it just teleported inside of his mouth. Problem solved. But assuming we don't believe in magic, and assuming this is uh, entertainment and a performance art, I was thinking about this, and I rewound it at the end and watched it carefully, and I believe I've identified the part where he gets it into his mouth. So to walk this fine line between exposure and not discussing it at all, I will abstain from mentioning the specific point in time in which he gets it into his mouth. But I will say, that I believe they carefully staged the choreography of their routine, especially this kind of horse playing back and forth between the two of them, how one magician was treating the other magician so rough. I will say that was carefully thought out and ties into how they managed to make it happen. Anyways, I thought it was an excellent performance by this duo, this Brynolf and Leung, and I really liked how they made their characters and how they interact part of the method. I thought that was very clever. I was thinking though about the fact that his hair was attached to the duct tape when he ripped it off. I was thinking, how could they solve that? You know, I thought about it for a while and I couldn't come up with a way to alter their act where he wouldn't have it ripped off because you have to have that tape wrapped on there really tight so that you don't think there's any way he could get a card into his mouth. And the fact that it was wrapped so tightly and uncomfortably around his head goes into their whole performance of their characters and how they like to roughhouse around. If they were just to put one single piece of tape around the front of his mouth, it wouldn't be quite as convincing. So what I'm saying is I feel sorry for the hair on his head being ripped out with every performance. Great act, and I loved their energy and their performance, and what did you think? Leave a comment below. By the way, if you don't want to miss the tutorials I'm going to make to teach you how to do cool things with playing cards, remember to click the subscription bell and the notification. Uh, you know what to do, okay? And now we're on to the bonus section of the video, where in which I read you a story from Aesop's fables to learn a pearl of wisdom that can apply to your life, or at least somebody's life. Am I right? So let's take a look at what we've got here. I'll select one randomly, like I like to do. Okay, the crow and the snake, which is chapter 230, and not at all related to this picture. So, our short story is The Crow and the Snake. A hungry crow spied a snake lying asleep in a sunny spot. 
and picking it up in his claws, he was carrying it off to a place where he could make a meal of it without being disturbed, when the snake reared its head and bit him. It was a poisonous snake, and the bite was fatal, and the dying crow said, What a cruel fate is mine! I thought I had made a lucky find, and it has cost me my life. So that's a short one, huh? No moral of the storyline, we just gotta figure this one out. Alright, what can we say? We th <laughs> the crow thought this was his lucky day, but he died. So when you think you've got something great, and then it just hurts you even more. Has that ever happened to you? Comment below. I'm trying to think of a situation in which I felt like I had a great thing and it ended up being a terrible thing, actually. Hmm. Excuse me, excuse me, I mean. Hmm. Well, I've got to say I'm having a hard time thinking of an example of this. Maybe it's because uh, I'm optimistic and in the end I usually end up justifying that where I landed is good for whatever reason. I'm just trying to remember, okay, so like, what's a time when something bad happened? I sprained my ankle once riding a scooter down a hill. I broke my ribs once learning how to surf in Bali but that was like a repetitive stress fracture. It wasn't like, I thought I had something good and then it immediately ended up being bad. I'm feeling a little bit thick now <laughs> as to how I should interpret this. Sometimes you guys have no idea how long I sit here trying to think of the moral of this story before I edit all that dead time out. <laughs> Forgot to take my intelligent pills today. <sighs> I feel so stupid. You know, as soon as I stop recording this, I'm gonna be like, of course. <laughs> ah! When did I hope something bad happen? <coughs> All right, so I've sat here long enough in the silence of my living room <laughs> and I haven't been able to think of a good thing except for maybe this is a cautionary tale for those people who are impulsive, like the crow just swooped down and grabbed the food without really thinking like, is this safe? You know what I mean? And I hope you do because I don't have much else to offer here. <laughs> Perhaps he should have been a little more selective and not just rushed in. It's really weird actually trying to stop and just think of like, the dumbest things you've ever done, like your biggest mistakes. <laughs> I don't usually stop and think about that. If, I, if I'm feeling down, sometimes I'll stop and I'll like count my blessings or like think of my achievements in my life to pump myself up, you know? But I don't usually purposely sit here and be like, when have I screwed up the biggest? <laughs> <sighs> All right, so if any of you can think of situations in your life where you had like a false alarm of something awesome that ended up being sharply the opposite, like really terrible, Go ahead and share that in the comments below. I feel bad that I wasn't able to generate some more usable wisdom from this story, but that's what happens sometimes. I've got corona brain going on. That's my excuse. Speaking of quarantine and all that kind of stuff, tomorrow the rules are supposed to change here in Ukraine, in Kiev, the capital city, and they're gonna do kind of a soft reopening of some businesses, like you can go eat on the terrace of a restaurant, not inside of the building, but on the outside if they have tables out there. And more importantly, they're supposedly gonna be opening up hair salons so I can finally get my hair cut. I don't know if you guys can see this because I kind of tried to push it down, but my hair has gotten really long. Normally I'm getting it cut almost every two weeks, every three weeks, but now I don't even know how long it's been. I've certainly stopped receiving comments from you all saying, hey, he looks like John Cena. I haven't got that at all with this hair. Check this out, I'm gonna reveal to you what kind of crazy long hair I've got going on here now. If I make it out of order, look at this. Can you see this? This is insane. So anyways, if the hair salons are open tomorrow, I'm gonna get this chopped off and I'm gonna return to normal and maybe I'll show a before and after on Instagram or on the YouTube stories or whatever. Maybe I'll film a video about it, who knows? Anyways, with that being said, thanks for making it this far into the video. I appreciate all of you who make it this far, it's really cool. Uh, remember to smash like if you enjoyed the video, of course. And I hope that you guys are having a great time with the whole situation in the world. And hopefully this is all going to kind of go away and be resolved pretty soon. And life will return to normal. And I will see you next time. <laughs>